compared to the blue area of the moon. An area that, for some reason, you can breathe without a spacesuit. Nearly kills everyone around her just by yelling stop, while Tony Stark builds a magical transformer to attack the Phoenix. There you go, Marvel's out of ideas. There's only one scene with the gun, no one actually gets shot. Rebooted into a more uh, grimy character with the new 52. I decided to combine both Uncanny Avengers and Avengers vs. X-Men consequences because they both are dealing with the aftermath of Avengers vs. X-Men. These aftermath type books aren't anything new for Marvel. At the very least, they did the same thing with Fear Itself. After Fear Itself, the main book, they had a Fear Itself um, consequence or some similar thing miniseries where they dealt with the aftermath. And uh, Uncanny Avengers itself kind of swings directly out of the events of Avengers vs. X-Men because it has a team of Avengers teaming up with the uh, team of X-Men in order to show the world that they can all work together. <clears throat> Uncanny Avengers by Rick Remender and um, John Cassidy. Um, I love Rick Remender's work on um, on um, Uncanny X-Force. Um, he does a really good job with the team dynamic. He's really made me care a lot about characters that I really didn't care about um, a while ago. And um, <coughs> excuse me. John Cassidy has pretty good art overall. Avengers vs. X-Men Consequences by Kieran Gillen, um, who's been doing pretty much all of the um, X-Men related stuff for at least the last year or two, if not longer. And um, Tom Rainey, which also does some very good art. So both of these deal with the fact that mutants are returning to the status quo prior to M-Day. So basically, for about 10 years, give or take, um, maybe a little bit closer to 6 years, um, the whole thing about X-Men has been, alright, we're done with the whole Sentinel thing, there's only 200 X-Men, most countries don't fear them anymore, in fact, um, because of that, they're on the run, it's kind of forced Scott Summers' hand to be more um, direct against people because there's only 200 left and he has to protect them. Now we're going, we're saying, alright, we've told all the stories we can tell with that kind of framework. Now we're going back to having the X-Men, uh, or mutants in general, feared, because there's mutants everywhere, and uh, people are buying Sentinels, and it's all going back to basically how things were under the Claremont days. <clears throat> um, now, in uh, Avengers vs. X-Men Consequences, um, Scott is in a regular jail, um, but they've put this device on him that kind of will give him a shock anytime he tries to use his mutant powers. This is kind of a new technology advancement on the whole Sentinel idea. And um, there's a lot, basically, um, there's a lot of, of work done by, by um, Kieran Gillen, who's just saying, hey, you're not even worth going to any of the special superhero prisons, you're just in a regular prison, they've got this device on you, and there's a lot about him being humiliated because of that. Um, and kind of um, making sure that even though he still did get a bit of a win with the fact that there's more mutant births, um, he still did kill people, he still is in jail, and he still deserves a little bit of humiliation. Um, and uh, the book kind of goes back and forth between a lot of stuff. There's some, um, there's an example of what happens in Wakanda now, and how mutants are viewed there, and, and um, there's the scene with Scott, there's another scene with Hope where we get to see um, what Hope gets to do now. Um, she's been the central focus of the X-Men um, since Second Coming, and so that's all been building up. And now she kind of is getting a free pass. Um, she, the way it's written, she may disappear for a while from the comics, um, but they could just be giving themselves a, a, the most flexibility possible. Um, <clears throat> Rainey's art style works really, really well with Wolverine. There's a scene um, there where Wolverine is explaining how he feels because of um, what Scott did and and how he feels that he really betrayed um, the trust that, that Charles put into him and all that. And uh, Wolverine looks amazing, the scene has a perfect tension, everything is great. Um, his artwork doesn't work so well in the scene with Hope, Wanda, and, and Captain America. Captain America ends up looking like a toy, things look a little weird, and it just, the scene just really looked weird to me. Um, interesting thing that they're doing now is they're trying to find the Extinction Team, um, which I thought was interesting because the Extinction Team wasn't really anything bad. It's not the same as trying to find the um, X Force, right? Because X Force been killing people. Extinction Team has just been was just Scott's way of saying, "Hey, this is how we're going to prove to the world that mutants are awesome." 
So it seems kind of weird that they're looking for the extinction team versus just looking for the um, people that were the five phoenixes. Um, in Uncanny Avengers, we have a little bit of a weird disconnect because Scott's actually in the S.H.I.E.L.D. facility, he's in the S.H.I.E.L.D. brig, and he's got, um, Havoc goes to visit him, which is his brother, and um, it's just really weird because, so here he's in this prison that kind of serves his stature, so I don't know if it's meant to have the fact that he's moved from one prison to the other, um, and there's just like a timeline difference that, that isn't 100% clear yet, or if there was a little bit of miscommunication between the authors, but it was a little weird, especially since they both came out in the same week, that there was a disconnect in where Scott Summers is being held. It's not the end of the world, but, but again, reading the whole universe as a whole, not just one book, um, it kind of makes it a little weird. Um, so basically, there, um, Rick Remender does a great job uh, writing a scene where Alex and, and Scott just discuss why Scott did what he did, whether it was right for him to become so Magneto-like, and, and it's interspersed with um, Wolverine delivering the eulogy at Xavier's uh, funeral, which is um, great. It's a great scene. I really hope that um, Marvel decides to keep him dead, if not forever, at least for long enough that it matters, that this whole, you know, eulogy and death and, you know, um, just will actually matter. It's kind of a, just a huge joke now with death in comic books. Um, there's a mutant terrorist, which kind of precipitates things. Okay, the the world is ready to be scared of mutants again. Here's this mutant terrorist doing stuff, and um, and there's a great scene with with Rogue and, and Wanda that kind of really it, I think it puts the good end cap on. All right, we're starting a new era. Here's Rogue blaming Wanda because Wanda essentially sets the chain of events in motion that leads to directly to um, Avengers, that leads directly to Avengers versus X Men. Um, so she's right to be pissed at her, but, you know, then again, uh, as Wanda makes some good points on why Rogue's kind of overreacting, and then we get our surprise ending of who the actual villain is. Um, I checked out the book because I love Rick Remender. Um, right now, I'm, I'm definitely going to check out uh, issue number two. I'm not a huge Avengers person, and the enemy is a big Avengers enemy, so we'll see what happens. We'll see um, if I end up sticking with the book, but I'm definitely going to at least get issue number two. So I would say, uh, Avengers vs. X-Men Consequences, um, I'd actually give that one uh, five stars. I think it works really well. Um, I'm not going to take off uh, any points for the artwork. Um, I think it does a good job of bringing up to speed where everyone's going, where everyone's been, how everyone feels. Um, again, the scene with Scott in the jail is really important. It works really well. Um, Uncanny X-Men, um, basically, they're forming this new team, but the impetus of this book is coming straight out from Avengers X-Men, so Remender has to spend a lot of time kind of dealing with that, the consequences of that, the ending of Avengers X-Men, and then tying that into this new book that he wants to form, this new team that he wants to form. And again, he does do a really good job at team books, see Secret Avengers, um, see Uncanny X-Force, but the book as a whole kind of suffers from the fact that he has to use issue number one to transition away from Avengers X-Men and into Marvel now. And it is Marvel's uh, flagship book, so I, I think I'd have to give that one 4 out of 5 stars. Um, but there's a lot of good potential. It, it may end up not being for me, because I'm not a big Avengers person, but I think it still has a lot of good potential. 